Hi guys, Taylor Cock here for Yahoo Esports. I am with Ann Hand, CEO of Super League Gaming, who has just come off of uh, the first season of City Champs, That's which right. is a local uh, esports uh, League of Legends tournament. Uh, the team is based in cities. Can you explain exactly what it is? Because it, it's something that is relatively new to esports. Absolutely. So the vision was always, can we um, create amateur leagues, recreational leagues, for kind of the 99.9% .9 of gamers out there who still love to make all those social connections in person and kind of the thrill of battle. And so City Champs is the first kind of attempt at that for the League of Legends community. Um, what we did is we curated 60 ranked players in four cities. So we have those players representing the Dallas Dynamite, the Chicago Force, the LA Shockwaves, and the Miami Menace. Okay. And those 60 players in each city just went through three weeks of city-on-city -city battles competing against each other live. So 12 teams of five in LA on a, any given night, perhaps taking on the 12 teams of five simultaneously in a Dallas theater. And it all culminated on Tuesday night when the Chicago Force were declared the winners of the first City Champ series. So, I mean, what was the impetus behind this? What, what, was, what was the goal here? Because it, this is something that we've seen a little bit in esports, yeah. uh, especially with the recently announced Overwatch League. Mm -hmm. um, why, why decide to take it locally? Because it, it is definitely something that uh, traditionally esports have not had teams local. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, certainly the idea was always that, you know, uh, no one can dispute that esports has arrived. Um, but wouldn't it be cool if we could take some of the good things that happen in traditional sports and bring that to the gamers themselves? So a lot of it was originally about can we bring them together in physical spaces and you know allow for even more of that heightened kind of teamwork and social connections and collaboration. Um, as far as you know, why the city lens became so important is we we recognize that you know it's almost kind of human instinct that people still want to root for their hometown team or represent their team. Mm -hmm. And again, while we would never want to assume that everything is the same between traditional sports and esports, we did find the more that we talked with different gamers out there that that was something they were longing for. And for um, Riot specifically, the reason it was such a good fit um, with Super League is because they had been really listening to their community and two really kind of strong themes were coming out. For those ranked players, there was really a desire to have their kind of minor league structure. You know, they, they love LCS and it was kind of a little bit of like, hey, I'm putting in real time into this game. I'm, I'm moving up the rankings. I maybe want my chance to strut in an arena and see myself play on the big screen. <laughs> And then for their more casual player, it was really just saying, look, I, you know, I play with 20 people you know, online, but I've only maybe met a few in real life. So I'd love a way to make more friends around the game and just have more fun and more connections. And that just widens the network of people I can go back home and, and play with online as well. So the, there is a bit of a concern here because uh, a lot of the times uh, players don't necessarily want to represent a single city like I mean part of the beauty of esports and part of the beauty yeah. of online gaming in general is the fact that they people can come from anywhere That's right. um, and and they can form the best teams possible but it seems like this is less about creating the world championship team and more about creating uh, pride in your specific city. absolutely and you know even if you look you know there's a cool trophy and there's some bragging rights and you get your your free jersey which we found I mean what's fascinating is is every week consistently all those teams across those four cities came in suited up in their uniform and really identified strongly with that team. But to that point, you know, there's hundreds of millions of gamers out there, um, you know, and there certainly will be some who will say, hey, I like the, the quiet of my home, my setup. You know, sometimes the physical environment isn't the environment that everybody likes to play in, but we certainly think there's a big, sizable group of people that um, really had fun with it. And even when we did exit polling in some of our early tests with Riot, you can imagine that we really had to, to spend a lot of time proving out that this was something that their community validated. They enjoyed the experience. They wanted to return to it. There were some folks who said, you know, maybe I'll just watch the first few times and then I'll kind of decide do I want to jump into this physical environment because it's a little different mm -hmm. than playing alone at home. So you bring up an interesting point there. The validation of esports fans is something that's like incredibly difficult to get. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, you know, even us at Yahoo Esports, <laughs> we, we from time to time struggle with the authenticity side of things sure. because we want to make sure that it's as real as possible for esports fans because they know exactly what they want. How, do you, yeah. how, how are you guys making sure that when you're creating these tournaments, it, it comes off as authentic as possible for the esports fan rather than try to bring in somebody else that isn't necessarily the right kind of fan that would create authenticity? Absolutely. Well, like, as I already mentioned, I mean, there was an extensive um, amount of testing that was done, real event testing, mm -hmm. 
and a lot of, of exit polling, you know, that really guided us as we continued to iterate the offer. And we finally hit a place about 60 days ago where Riot felt we had really kind of listened to all of that feedback and had gotten the product to a place that it really was, you know, consistently getting really favorable results from all the people that were playing um, and that it was ready to kind of put it out there. But even putting it out there, we did so with a, a big kind of bucket of humility dumped on our head a bit because we knew that like this is really for the players to you know continue to give us feedback about what this experience has been the reactions have been tremendous and you know we just had our follow up meeting with kind of the postmortem so to speak with Riot yesterday and and they were thrilled as well so i think it's nice to see how the players um, kind of worked it out as well. So in, in addition to giving us good feedback about how to continually improve it, just even in the early days of announcing City Champs, just kind of watching the Reddit threads and watching how, you know, without us having to tell them too much what it was about, letting them kind of work out mm -hmm. why this was important to them, why they wanted to join the leagues, and, you know, what they were hoping the experience would be like. So a lot of it is just listening. Um, but I will say, um, I just, I'm amazed that in just four, you know, cities, like a very soft launch, um, you know, we found the Chicago Force team about three hours ahead of the final battle in a <laughs> Starbucks across the street, plotting out which, play, you know, champions they were going to ban against Dallas. Um, we had over 40 spectators show up. We weren't even selling spectating seats. But over 40 people showed up how in Chicago they, how as well. How did they get there? Well, we kind of nicely convinced the theater to let them in. Uh -huh. I think they were friends and family. And so there was a huge spectating interest and um, and lots of funny kind of social postings about, you know, 24 L.A. Shockwaves players at the IHOP afterwards. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I really, I what was fascinating is how long, too, they lingered in the theater after. People stayed for a good hour, hour and a half, just exchanging emails and Sumner IDs and just, you know, I really believe that we created something special where these people are really going to maintain these friendships and, you know, kind of walked in maybe knowing one or two people and walked out having, you know, hopefully 59 new friends. I mean, so how did you get to the point where, or how did you find these players? I mean, how did you put the, these teams together? That, that That's something that, like, were they implicit in that? Did they put them together themselves? Yeah, or no, them? no. We, with, a, with a lot of help with Riot, because the, the idea over time is that we'll be able to run um, a bit of a, an online preseason that will help people kind of um, move up the rankings and qualify for the city champs. We also have an offer called City Rec, which you'll see coming out in January. That's more for the laid back player. Come in for a couple hours, have some fun playing in League Unlocked and, and um, uh, just more casual play. It doesn't have quite this heightened competitive crescendo to it. But for the city champs, um, what we did is, um, because we didn't have any other mechanism to kind of find those 60 players, we opened up registration for 72 hours um, because Riot really promoted it inside their client as well because we're kind of an approved part of their ecosystem. This is something their community said they wanted. Um, we got over 1,700 registrants for the four cities. So, and then what we did is we, a little bit of a golden ticket approach. Sure. You know, we had people, you know, give us key information about their level of play and, and just kind of had to do a little bit of a hand picking for the first one. But um, we'll have a different mechanism that will make it a way for people to really compete the mm -hmm. next time around. So what's, what's the goals going forward here? Are you going to expand this to more, more cities? Uh, for Can you say how many you're looking at for next season? Absolutely, yeah. So originally we were planning on rolling out four new cities per quarter. Um, I think when City Champs did so well and the reaction was so positive from the players, we thought, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's, let's go for more. So um, we're thinking about um, running another City Champs because that's, that's not supposed to happen every month. That's more of, you know, something that's kind of happens a couple times a year because sure. it's a more heightened kind of, um, you know, experience. Um, we're thinking about running the next one in April, May and having it in 16 cities. Mm -hmm. So that means we'd be adding next. 12 here in the next 15. few months. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, something that's interesting about this as well is, is traditionally when you're talking about an esports team, when people become fans of a specific esports team, say TSM or Cloud9, mm -hmm. uh, they are become fans of the players themselves. That's right. Um, and when you're talking about a team, uh, a league where it's really city focused, it, it becomes difficult to really highlight those specific players. Mm -hmm. Is there Are there plans to really take it and say, hey, we're gonna highlight this guy, or we're gonna make it maybe a short documentary about this sort of thing? Absolutely, is I mean, we, we use this as a chance. I mean, we had, um, you know, camera crews at every event. Just be, just for our own social content, we wanted to get to know these players better, their kind of backstories. We had a guy who 
drove down from Sacramento every mm -hmm. week to be a member of the LA Shockwave. Okay. So there's some kind Not of fascinating. Really from LA. Yeah. You well, know, I know. We kind of decided to be kind to him because he was originally from LA. Okay. You know, Fair. you can kind of root for your old hometown. Sure. We figured, but. Um, but sure, we, we definitely um, know that there's some richness there as far as who these people are, you know, what their aspirations are, whether it's to be a professional or to have a, not, a different kind of esports career. And we just think there's a lot of richness there. And, you know, our hope is one day, you know, maybe one of our players will graduate into the big leagues. Um, but we certainly, you know, definitely feel like this is a great um, kind of organic moment for them to start to have a voice. As well, so you said maybe we'll get up there, but what do you where do you see uh, this league in relation to the LCS or in relation to these high level pro leagues? I mean, you know, look, I mean, it's always a dream that we might, you know, one day have been the local proving ground for somebody who kind of finds their way into into the the professional esports world. But certainly, the reason that we we're such a good fit for Riot is because we're highly complementary to LCS. You know, they've spent five years building this beautiful product and and what we do is is we offer, you know, a different kind of competitive um, mode for all the players who aren't part of that league. It, it, there is the uh, the, co the Collegiate League of Legends scene, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Yahoo Esports is very lucky to have been involved with nice. for uh, you all rivalries. Uh, and that is another example of sort of a different approach to a localized yes. uh, esports e scene. It, uh, where do you see yourselves in relation to that particularly? Yeah, I mean, one of our main champions at Riot runs that program as mm -hmm. well. And so I think... Um, you know, it's very early days on that, but we certainly think there could be some interesting kind of connectivity with that, kind of creating, you know, college and theater battles and some of that. So we think both for high school and college, Super League is a, has a chance to really kind of shoot off into those directions as well and be very complimentary. Right, and thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, for everybody else and for everything else League of Legends, the pro scene and otherwise, keep it right here on Yahoo Esports.